guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. Got a little project I am decided to take on here. This is uh, for my knee, for the mill. I have uh, uh, been using a drill driver to drive this adapter, which takes the place of the normal hand crank, which fits on here and you know engages this nut so this is the normal way to raise and lower the knee uh, the entire table assembly on this mill now this mill is a bridgeport clone built in taiwan the guy that had it it had it as a spare a backup in his machine shop so it was hardly ever used so it's in fabulous fabulous shape I was very lucky to, to find this one. In any case, I'm going to change the knee to uh, electric drive. And so I bought this power feed. This is a line power feed. And this is for the Z axis, which is what the knee is called, Z axis. And I don't know whether it could be adapted to other axes or not, but this was, well, maybe it's. 500 PZ, maybe that's what that means. In any case, came off eBay, and I mean, there's dozens and dozens of feed mechanisms like this on eBay. So if you go out there and search on vertical mill knee or Z axis drive, you'll find this. So here's so here's the drive unit. Uh, I mean, the way this works is pretty straightforward. I had already put one on my Y-axis a couple of years ago, and it's very helpful in terms of if you're cutting in and out using the Y-axis, having this power feed gives you a much better finish on your parts than if you um, try to do it by hand. The way this works is pretty easy, pretty easy. There's a little bevel gear here, which is driven by the motor inside. And then there's a matching gear here. And get the protective cover off of it. So this is the matching gear, which fits in here, engages that small bevel gear, and then is keyed to the shaft. So it rotates the shaft. So I mean that's it's pretty simple how it works. And just getting it on the mill. They the instructions are not the greatest instructions, so we'll we'll work our way through this. I think we can I did the other one. I had some issues installing the y-axis feed. I had to actually drill and tap some different holes in some of the parts. I don't know if I'm going to need to do that for this or not. Let's hope not. We'll go ahead and um, get started on this. All right, so the first thing to do, of course, is take the crank handle off. Then this castle nut, which is keyed to the shaft, slides out. Then this unscrews. comes out. So we'll set that down here. And there's a small key in the shaft right here, so that needs to come out. All right, so we'll see if we can get this key out. So we'll save that. All 
All right, this is a replacement flange that they give you. The difference really is it has two tapped holes here, which the drive unit will fasten to. So that's the purpose of those. And <laughs> now there's two holes on here which are drilled and tapped and because of the orientation of the three fastening screws these holes are clocked to about um, you know, eight and two. So there are multiple choices of holes to attach it to. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to loosen this one up a little bit. These up a little bit. Give this one a little bit of room to move here. All right. So the screws are going in. They're a little stiffer going in than they were coming out. And I'm not sure whether that's an alignment issue or all right. So I got a issue here. Let me. This is not working right. This flange is cockeyed in here. I just noticed that. Let's see what we need to do. There we go. I don't know how I got that messed up. I think the issue is the the holes in this flange are a little bit small so they don't quite line up so I need to enlarge these three holes a little bit larger so that this these screws will line up better with the holes it's like the circle the circle for these holes on the on the mill a little bit further apart than the holes here on this flange. All right, so I've got the this flange clamped in my woodworking vise. This has wood jaws, so it won't damage it. Deburr those holes. I can do them on the inside too. Hmm. All right, that still leaves a shoulder at the bottom of the hole to capture the cap screw. Okay, so the next step is to install this extension shaft and it threads on there like that. Alright, the next thing is to install the 
drive unit and it has a series of holes and you can pick whichever holes you want to use to attach this to the So I have enough clearance to just let this hang vertical. My Y-axis drive is tilted to the right. This one I think I can leave vertical. I mean, I could raise it up like this to see the controls better. And that actually might be, might be a good idea. I don't have to reach down quite as far. So we just need All right, when I went to install this, I want to put it at either vertical or at an angle to the left. And I found out that the way I had these two threaded holes wouldn't allow me to do that because it needs to intersect with two holes in this array. So what I've done is I, I turned the camera off. I did off camera. I unscrewed it and turned it two thirds of the way around. So I think now these two threaded holes will line up with the holes in the drive unit in the orientation that I want. So you have to you ought to check the orientation of the drive unit and make sure it will match up with the available holes in the flange here. So now I think this will work like this. Oops, forgot. I knew something was wrong there. other one engages here yes okay so at this angle so you want to make sure that the holes that you're going to screw into in this flange line up with line up with holes in the drive unit at the orientation you desire. So that's lesson learned there. Okay, so the next thing is to slide this, the bevel gear, the drive gear onto, it needs to, inter, these teeth need to intercept the teeth here on this drive gear and they want you to check the backlash I mean I feel a little bit of play there it seems to be All right, so this is screwing out hmm.
so we need to tighten these screws a bit more. I feel like these screws are too long. Can't tighten them down all the way. Alright, I'm going to grind a bit off the tip of these screws. I'm going to do one at a time. Alright, I took a little bit off the tip of this screw. Let's see if we can get it to bottom out on this flange. Because this is loose, I can't tighten the screws because they bottom out. All right, that's all it took. All right, I only took about a millimeter off the end of the screw. A little bit, you know, less than half, less than a sixteenth of an inch millimeter would be a 20, 1 25th of an inch. Let's see if we can get this tight. All right, so that made a big difference. The screws were bottoming out on the other side of that flange, so it wasn't tightening up, so that's tight. All right, let's check the backlash again. I don't think it changes anything. All right, so here you can see the key. With that change, tightening this down, I think it needs another shim. You want a little bit of play between the teeth, but not too much. I think it's okay with the one shim. The key back in. Alright, the reason you can't feel any play is because of the keys keeping this from moving. So make sure when you set the backlash that you don't have the key in the keyway. Um, otherwise, you can't move this to feel how it, the, 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 the little bit of slack between the teeth. You want a little bit. So I think that's good. I wound up taking the shim out. key back in. Be sure to keep the, the gear clean because it's got grease on it. Okay. I think we're done with that step. So here's, the, here's what's so interesting about the instructions. It says install gear key not in. So that implies install the gear key if it's not in. 
But then it says, remove the bevel gear after step four is okay, then install key, replace gear, install dial and tighten dial nut, add a few shim if dial is grinding on the gear, pack with grease before installing the gear, do not use silicone type grease. So instead of install gear not in, it's make sure gear is not key, I'm sorry, install gear key not in, it should say make sure gear key is not in. So it's always a problem understanding the Chinese translation of these instructions. Maybe it would be good to read the whole thing first. All right, install the key, replace the gear, install dial, tighten dial nut, add a few shim if dial is grinding, pack the gear. Install, check clutch against bevel gear, then drive through one hole of five millimeter dial, and then drive spring pin. Remove the bevel gear, or install gear pack with grease, install, check clutch against bevel gear, then drive through one hole of five millimeter diameter, then drive spring pin. Be sure you have followed each step carefully and correctly before installing the spring pin. Install hand crank, rotate clockwise to check for proper shimming. There's no binding, install spring hand crank already installed, then install washer and screw. All right. I believe they want you to drill. Alright, so I think I want to put a shim between here and here so that this edge doesn't rub on that. They give you some shims. There's several there. Still rubbing. A couple more. A couple more. All right, that's too many. Okay, so that's real close, but not, not touching. All right, so the next thing is to install the, this drive they call it a clutch. And then according to the diagram, we're supposed to drill a hole through this neck down portion of the clutch, five millimeter hole and drive a five millimeter pin. So it's asking for a five millimeter hole. Unfortunately, I don't have metric drill bits, so the solution is to find another drill bit which is close. So it's a five millimeter hole divided by 25.4 millimeters per inch, 0 0.1968, 0 0.197, so go to my chart here, find point one nine, there's a one nine six zero, so it's less than a thousandth off, so that's a number nine, number nine drill size, so we'll use a number nine drill size. So we need to drill a hole through this um, collar here, and I've got a number nine drill. I hate doing this without any assistance, but in terms of setup, I have to do it by hand. But I guess anything is reversible.
All right, I think that went through fine. Before I drive the pin through, I'm gonna just check it for operation. Seems to, seems to, I've just got this, I'm putting the center punch in there just in place of the pin temporarily. So it feels like it's operating, it's, it's smooth, but it is a little bit of resistance on it. All right, next step is to drive the pin in. All right, so this is the roll pin they give you. There are actually special punches for driving roll pins. They have a little nub on the end, so it keeps the keeps from damaging the pin. Okay, just come out the other side, right there. All right, let's see what happens here. Table's going down. Table's going up. Okay. All right, last thing to do is put this if you want the crank handle on here I think my preference is to leave it leave it off. You can install it um, you know, there's a washer and a nut, a screw, which goes on here, and you can fasten it. And the purpose of the pin, uh, the purpose of the spring is to push, to disengage these two, the crank handle from the drive. And thus you want to use it, you can push it in, engage it, and then, you know, move the knee manually. To me, this handle sticks out too far and gets in my way. So I'm going to leave it off. Of course, keep, keep the parts in case I do need it to use it. That's the basic installation of the uh, drive for the knee. Now, in the, in the kit comes additional parts, stops, and limit switches that you can install here's the the limit switches are here and you drill and tap the side of the knee and add these limit switches and they give you the stops and and that sort of thing I'm not going to install that I don't see any need to it I'm uh, running it by myself 
and when I put the y-axis feed on I didn't hook up the limit switches on that don't think there's any don't feel like there's any need for them and in a shop where you have liability someone else other people using the equipment you certainly would want to put them on because you don't want somebody to damage the equipment by over traveling the the drive either damaging the drive or something else on the mill I'm here by myself I can I can manage manage that I'm gonna put the handle on this the little knob and then I'm gonna tie up the tie up the wires connect them and we'll call it done all right so that concludes this little short project video we've added the power feed for the knee or the z-axis for the mill Appreciate all right thanks for watching Leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so you get notified of uh, new videos that I put out, and I'll see you guys next time.